The world's largest bacterium has been discovered. It is so large that it can be seen with the naked eye. In the Caribbean mangrove forests, scientists have discovered the largest bacterium in the world. There are about 5,000 times larger than other bacteria and can be seen without the aid of a microscope. Some individuals may be larger than small insects. The giant bacterium was named Thiomargarita magnifica by scientists. You don't need a microscope to see it. Its thread-like shape is visible to the naked eye. Other large microorganisms can reach sizes of the order of 750 micrometers. But with the newly discovered bacteria, they're tiny. The largest individuals of Thiomargarita magnifica can grow up to 2 cm 20,000 micrometers, but researchers believe that under favorable conditions they can be even larger. A giant bacterium may be the missing link in the evolution of complex cells, researchers point out. Their research can be found in the BioRxiv preprint database. The bacterium was discovered 10 years ago in the Lesser Antilles in the eastern part of Guadeloupe by Professor Olivier Gros from the University of the French Antilles in Pointe Pitta. A scientist stumbled upon strange, thread-like organisms on the surface of decaying leaves in a mangrove forest. It wasn't until five years later that he and his colleagues realized that these organisms were actually bacteria. Their research was undertaken by Jean-Marie Volland, who had previously worked with Grow. When it comes to bacteria, I never say never, but this one certainly pushes what we thought was the upper limit of size by a factor of 10, says Verena Carvalho, a microbiologist at the University of Massachusetts, Amherst. The cells of most species of bacteria are about 2 micrometers long, with some of the largest specimens reaching 750 micrometers. The average length of the newly discovered bacterium is 9,000 micrometers, but the largest individuals found by Voland were 2 centimeters 20,000 micrometers. This overgrown bacterium is larger than fruit flies or nematodes, organisms common in laboratories around the world that are sometimes infected with much smaller bacteria for research purposes. However, Carvalho believes that unless Thiomargarita magnifica bacteria are trampled on, eaten, blown away by the wind or washed away by the waves, they can grow even larger. Using fluorescence X-ray and electron microscopy in conjunction with genome sequencing, the researchers described the new bacterium. They found that these bacteria grow orders of magnitude beyond the theoretical limit of bacterial cell size due to their unique biology. What's more, this giant has a huge genome of 11 million base pairs containing about 11,000 genes clearly distinguishable genes. Typically, bacterial genomes average about 4 million base pairs and about 3,900 genes. The genome does not float freely inside the cell like in other bacteria, but is surrounded by a membrane, a characteristic of much more complex cells such as those in the human body. The Thiomargarita magnifica bacterium carries all of its DNA in a membranous sac. Unlike most bacteria whose genetic material floats unbound within their cells, this feature not only distinguishes the newly discovered bacterium from other microbes, but also distinguishes it from other prokaryotic organisms. Due to the differences in the structure of cells, scientists distinguish two groups of organisms, prokaryotic and eukaryotic organisms. The first group includes bacteria and single-celled microbes called archaea. The second group includes everything from yeast to most multicellular life, including humans. Prokaryotes have free-floating DNA while eukaryotes embed their DNA in the nucleus. There are many more differences. 
but the presence of a cell nucleus is the most important feature of eukaryotic cells. This also means that a newly discovered microbe that carries its DNA in a membranous sac blurs the line between prokaryotes and eukaryotes and may be the missing link in the evolution of complex cells. Thiomargarita magnifica also has a second membranous sac. It is presumably filled with water and occupies about 70% total cell volume. Experiments on mice show that music can relieve pain. An international team of scientists conducting experiments on mice showed how sound can inhibit pain processing in the brain. These findings could lead to the development of new ways to fight pain. A group of scientists have identified the neural mechanisms by which sound relieves pain. The research, which appeared in the journal Science, was conducted on rodents. But scientists believe that similar mechanisms also operate in humans. These findings could help develop safer and more effective pain treatments. The study was conducted by scientists from the National Institute of Dental and Craniofacial Research, which is part of the National Institutes of Health and Chinese Institutions, the University of Science and Technology and Enway Medical University. We need more effective methods to manage acute and chronic pain. And that starts with a better understanding of the underlying neural processes that regulate pain, says NIDCR director Rena D'Souza. By unraveling the circuits that mediate pain relief in mice by sound. This study adds critical knowledge that may ultimately lead to the development of new approaches to pain therapy. It all started in 1960, when a group of dentists published a very interesting study in which they played music to their patients during procedures. People seemed to feel less pain when they listened to music. Some did not even need anesthesia to survive the unpleasant procedures. However, why the brain reduces pain sensation in response to sounds has not been clear. In a new study, Scientists have been able to elucidate the pain-relieving effect of sounds, at least in mice. To better understand the mechanisms that reduce the sensation of pain, scientists played symphonic music. Rejouissance bark, to mice for 20 minutes a day, which was pleasant, at least for human ears. Music was played at 50 minus 60 decibels to 60 decibels is the noise level produced by, for example, a vacuum cleaner. The background noise was around 45 decibels. During these sessions, the researchers injected a pain-inducing solution into the mice's paws. They then poked the rodent's paws with fine fibers at different levels of pressure to see how they reacted. If they flinched, licked their paws, or pulled their paws back. The researchers took that as an indication that the mice felt pain. They found that music played at a low intensity relative to the background noise reduced the mice's sensitivity to pain. The scientists then changed bark to a rather nasty rearrangement of the same piece. They also gave the rodents the usual hum. Surprisingly, all three types of sounds had the same effect. When the researchers poked the mice's paws at around 50 decibels, the mice did not flinch. At louder sounds, the animals were significantly more sensitive to the stimulus. It only took a third of the pressure on their paws to make them react as they would without the music. It turns out that intensity is the key, says Yuan Yuan Lu of the National Institute of Dental and Craniofacial Research. We were really surprised to find out that it was the intensity of the sound that mattered, not the category or the enjoyment of listening to it, adds Lu. The researchers repeated the experiments by tracking a red fluorescent dye injected into the mouse's auditory cortex, the sound processing region of the brain. They found that 
but a lot of the pigment accumulated in certain dense areas of the thalamus, which is the center of sensory processing, suggesting that connections between this region and the auditory cortex are involved in pain suppression. Tiny electrodes implanted in the animal's brains also showed that relatively quiet sounds reduced activity in the auditory cortex. Research has shown that low-intensity sounds appear to suppress neurological signals between the auditory cortex and the thalamus, inhibiting pain processing in the thalamus. The team concluded in the paper. In general, sound reduces pain in mice by lowering neuronal activity in the auditory cortex. It is not clear whether similar processes also occur in humans, and whether other aspects of sound, such as harmony or listening pleasure, are important for pain relief in humans. We don't know if human music has any meaning to rodents, but it has many different meanings to humans, says Lou. The results could provide researchers with a starting point for research to determine whether these findings will apply to humans.